Hello and welcome to another video. I'm Maz and today I'm in Gloucester. And in today's video, I'll be making a video on this Saab 93. This car was kindly lent to me by its owner. And this is my first video on a Saab. A quick overview, the Saab car manufacturer is actually a division of the Saab aeroplane company who were originally making fighter planes and still are to this day. But their first car was made in 1945, starting with the 92, which had a two-stroke engine then came the 93, not this one, but a different one, and a 96, a 900, a 9000, and this 93. And generally speaking, all Saab cars started with a 9, with the exception of the Saab 600, which was based on the Lancia Delta. And in the 1970s, Saab actually did a joint venture with Fiat to make the 9000, which was based on the Fiat Chroma, and the Lancia Tema, and straight after that the joint venture went and in 1989 Saab was purchased by General Motors. General Motors tried to sort of do their thing onto Saab and make them badge engineer cars so the second generation 900, the 1994 model, was going to be based on the Mark III Cavalier or the Opel Vectra A but Saab sort of disregarded their message and only a third of its components had shared with the Cavalier and when the replacement came this one the 93 the platform in question was the Vectra platform the Vectra C and even the wheelbase is different in this car so a lot more has been changed from the GM donor platform and the last car that Saab made was the 95 which ended production in 2011 now, a Chinese electric company called NEVS did try to make more 93s from 2013 to 2014 and then in 2023 they too went bust. And the Trollhattan factory has now been acquired by Polestar. Now, in the case of this 93, the range started with the Vector, then the Linear, then the Arc and then this, the range topping Aero Trim. It also received a facelift later on which completely modernized the front end and you also had a choice of engines from four cylinders to a v6 this particular one is the range topping v6 model so coming to the front this is what the 93 looks like and this is what its key looks like it's very reminiscent to the mercedes key of 2003 but i still like the way it looks it does feel a bit plasticky if i have to be honest but overall it still looks more interesting than the switcher blade key you got from VW Group. And coming to the front, this is the signature Saab grille where you have this horizontal section with two verticals flanking each side. This pre-facelift has the more simpler headlight design. On the facelift, the vertical parts of the grille would actually link into the headlights. Interestingly, you get not one, not two, but three washer jets on the bonnet. These are aftermarket, coming to the side. Very simple design, not, not much to talk about except for one thing. On the C pillar, you get this signature Saab hockey stick window line, which they've had since the 1970s. Fairly reminiscent to what BMW call the Hofmeister kink. And in the case of this car, you do get this very flaky black paint. And these wheels are also aftermarket. Coming to the back, this V6 model has two exhausts, one on each side. And of course, this is an aero model. And you also get a lip spoiler, which I think finishes off this otherwise curved deck lid. Coming to the back, Being a four-door saloon, you do get a very generous boot space. Though, strangely, the 93 never got the hatchback variant that the old 900 did. So, access to the boot is relatively limited, but not too bad as far as saloons go. 
and if you want you can also fold the seat back from here and interestingly you get a little handle here to pull the deck lid coming to the back you do get this nice silver finish on the door card and I like how the design of the door handle is integrated to its bezel coming to the back now and it's fairly tight here in the back though I will have more space if the seat in front moves slightly forward and you do get an armrest in the center which is blocked off by the car seat on the other side and there's nothing on the armrest no cup holders at all interestingly these rear air vents do look very voxel like they sort of look like the ones you get in an Astra and interestingly a little slot down here and some pockets on the back of the seats and on the doors as well but that's about it from the back and things are a lot more interesting here once again on the doors you get the door releaser that is integrated into the bezel kind of like a Nike swoosh and once again you got the silver trim on top and the mirror switches are mounted on the window quarter itself normally they're down here somewhere as I said sitting in the front that's where things are a lot more interesting so for starters the dashboard wraps around the driver and the center console is also angled towards the driver and this particular one has the facelift interior so it's got the silver trims around here and on the steering wheel so here's my point of view that's aftermarket there's already a turbo dial on the instrument cluster and like I said if I pan back this is what the dash looks like as I mentioned this section is angled towards the driver and the cup holder is this one right here which I think is very very quirky and then you just push again to close it strange that they only put it on one side I think two cup holders would be really good that being said there is another one down here this is just a key but this is probably more for a bottle rather than a cup signature Saab design is to have the ignition on the center console as opposed to behind the wheel so that way if you're in a head-on collision the key does not bruise your knee this is the handbrake with the releaser the button releaser over here instead so that way when it's down it's actually disguised into the center console you do get a center armrest and it extends forwards as well and underneath you do get some storage this particular model is a six-speed manual automatics are also available this is just a hoodie and for reverse so you just pull like this and then it goes all the way to reverse uh, unlike in a BMW where you have to push it all the way to the left the seats in this particular model are heavily bolstered which I really like and the material is very generous and interestingly the headrests this is also apparent on older subs as well sort of have this boomerang design and the mounting points are actually on the top normally that's common for headrests on the back but Saab also do them for the front as well you also get a glove box here and this button here is the releaser which I really like so that way the driver does not have to reach all the way here or down there to open the glove box and once again the silver theme continues here with the dual zone climate control that's a slot for your coins and that is a 12 volt socket down there is a place where you can store your phone or in this case sunglasses sun visors are very very big and just like in a dressing room you get two lights on each side for the vanity mirror and here's what the steering wheel looks like very distinct and they're also multi-function so you've got your volume here and the phone access right here and once again the silver finish continues here as well because Saab was owned by General Motors at this time there are some General Motors switchgear 
dotted around the car. But the same can be said with Volvo as well when they were owned by Ford. Interestingly, I've just discovered where the cup holders are for the back. They are right here. And being a Saab, you get something called a night panel button, which if you press it, turns off all the dials here except for the speedo. So that way, when you're driving around at night, the green light does not glare too much while on the move. Unfortunately, you can't really see it in broad daylight. That's the best I can show you. You can see the dials on the right switching off. So that's the exterior and interior done now, so let's see what this car is like to drive. Okay, seatbelt on. Ignition into the center console and start. And off we go. The clutch in this particular car is very grabby, so it's very easy to identify. Steering wheel is on the heavier side, but still maneuverable here in this Gloucester Morrison's car park. And generally speaking, it's very easy to maneuver around in. The six speeder is very nice and smooth. Each gear sh shift is very slick. Onto Eastern Avenue. Into a very busy Eastern Avenue as well. Indicator tick is very high pitched in this car. This car is turbocharged, so there was a turbo spool there. There are a few bumps coming in the way. Certainly a few squeaks. But nothing major. As far as manuals go, this is a very good one. Um, the other manuals I've been driving can feel a bit notchy, but this one goes in smoothly. Visibility is very generous. Exhaust is very loud, but that's aftermarket, so I'm not really gonna comment on that. Speed bump. Few squeaks coming in. Here comes another speed bump. A bit on the bouncy side, but this car is the sportier V6. Really have to slow down for these speed bumps. Not at all advised to drive this thing through Barton Street. In this particular car, I'm actually trying to go. In this particular car, I'm actually trying to go around the speed bumps, and the undulations here are unavoidable. The ride is so rough it actually knocked the GoPro out of its mount. Whilst the 3 Series is the benchmark for this category of car, the S60 is this car's main competitor and Volvo are on the bias towards comfort. So if this does feel a bit crashy, I'm sure the S60 would be a viable choice for you.
So yes, definitely not the best to go over speed bumps if you live in a very built up city. Footrest is very generous. Normally in manual cars you just get half a footrest, but in this one I can rest the vast majority of my foot onto it. Into the city centre now. The ride is very shaky. As I mentioned, you can feel even the slightest of undulations. And with the heavy steering, maneuverability can be somewhat heavy if you're used to Mercedes steering. But it's definitely a very shallow learning curve once you get used to it. But turning is adequate. And it's very easy to maneuver around thanks to very generous visibility around the car. Here comes a sharp left turn. How does it cope? Actually, no body roll at all. And even though the seats are not wing backed, I did not fall out like I did with literally any other car. I still managed to maintain position. Final thing to test what it's like on the open road. So, heading towards the dual carriageway. Because this car is turbocharged, there is some lag until around two and a half thousand revs. That turbo flutter is definitely off the market. And thanks to it being a six speeder, even doing dual carriageway speed, it's very, very quiet. The car can feel a bit loose when turning during the hard acceleration and at 70 this car does just over 2,000 revs so revs are very very generous So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching me try out this Saab 9.3. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you are new, ring the bell to stay up to speed, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers!